Hello everybody and welcome once again to Lost Souls. Let me just put my face on. I've got my face off at the moment. Let's just dig it on out. I think any bowl will slow it says, doesn't it? Oh yeah, I've got Gratia Mark's nose now. <laughs> it looks just, just just dreadful, doesn't it? Anyway, I have got loads and loads of tips and I've been very busy between this episode and the last episode. Let's start with some of the tips, shall we? The first tip I'd like to talk to you is about Phoenix Prince has given me a tip about the blazing juggernauts. If we crouch and press shift, they don't attack you so much, so which is pretty good. Happens has been telling me to make a mob farm. For that, I needed to go and find some, um, what's it called, from the nether. Let's have a look. Yeah, a drop of evil. So I've got my drop of evil. I've got some bones and I've got some wither dust. I actually managed to make an ender tether. I was going to show you this, so I was saying, oh, the recipe's broken, can't make an, em an, em an ender tether. But it's actually possible. I want you to sh I'll show you the recipe for this. I'll sort it again. There's two unstable ingots. But these unstable ingots, if you look at the recipe for those, you make them like this. But they're not unstable ingots. These are stable, stable unstable ingots. Now, I hope they could pronounce this right, but... Malinqua has told me that you actually put these into the stroke cauldron and then you get this type of ingot. So you get the unstable stable in the unstable ingot, which doesn't blow up by the way. I'm not quite sure why you've got two recipes for it, but this is the one you have to do. So you basically you take your unstable nuggets and put them into a stroke crucible and then you'll get these. And then from that you can actually then make your ender tether, this thing. And this one here, the unstable ender pearl. It was also a bit tricky. It was wither dust, which you see I've got one from the wither skeletons, and an ender pearl. I was lucky I got four ender pearls in a quest reward, so that was pretty good actually, because that allowed me to do these and to make the resonator and things like that. So let's get let's get on and have another look at this. I got some more hot, some more tips from. I actually got a load of good tips from Malinqua between episodes. Let's one and let's one and let's have a look at one of those. My tongue got tired then. Let's go and have a look at this one. He said, if you power the hopper here, so I've got this filtered hopper, and if you give it power, we've got the thing in there. It doesn't break when you do it, so let's have a look. I have got some urns here, and I've got some, and what do I need? I need some ground netherrack. Tell you what, I'll put an urn down here, first of all. We need to go and find some ground netherrack. Did I not make any? Hmm, that's not so good. I'm going to take those with me and show you another recipe for that as well. And when you walk, when I walk in here, you'll see a tank with some liquid in, and I'll tell you about that in a minute as well. So there's a lot, there's a lot in this episode. What did I want? I wanted some um, ground netherrack. Do I have any? I think I saw a stack in here when I was doing my videos. I've got eight. Actually, eight enough. Because normally you have to use 16 of these things, don't we? And I've also got a mega, another mega torch. There is a mega torch at the front here, and I've put a mega torch marker on it. The reason for that is I wanted to see how far away things were from the mega, from the mega torch to prevent things from spawning. So let's go and do this. And that's, this has two effects. As well, the first effect is it doesn't break the hopper. So let's just try that. They all fall into there, and we don't get any gas spawning. So that is fantastic. Thank you very much for that tip. Now we're down the bottom here, we get that hop. We get that solar urn, and we could put another one down for the next time. So then we can take this along, and of course put it into the stroke crucible. And you'll notice I've got some more diamond ingots in there. So we can put that in there, and we'll get another soul, soul steel. I thought it was... Nope. Actually, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but there is a recipe for this. These Hellfire Dust, after you made your hibachis, I haven't got that much uses, but one of them is actually quite good. So let's look at the uses of this stuff. And the one that you can do is you can have some potash with four of these Hellfire Dusts will give you eight nether sludges. And the uses of nether sludges, if you put those and you fire those, you get nether bricks. And I think that's actually quite a good recipe. 
So what we have to do is to have to make some potash. Now to make potash, let's have a look at that. The uses of the sawdust is basically the sawdust recipe. The uses of that one, potash is made in the stroked crucible, like that. So we need 16 of those to make some potash. So we've got 64 there, so that'll make six four potash, and that's in the stroked crucible. I think it was the crucible. Hold on, I think it's I think it's this one. Banging something at door. Oh no. So now I've got another soul for steel and good. Strange noise. So we should get from here a, some potash in a second. Sounds like something's trying to break down the door. I'm just trying to think how we actually got any doors to be broken down. Because I removed the only door I've got. I think it's something over here. Anyway, so now, so four of those plus one potash in the. I think it's just an in a cruise in a cauldron should make. It's very strange noises. Don't like this still. Should make this um, nether sludge. Should make. How many nether sludge does it make? Four or something like that. So we can let those cook. What I've been doing here is I've been laying down some <laughs> overgrown netherrack in a pattern. What I want to see is if this actually spreads. I'm not sure if it does spread or if it's just worn off type stuff. So that was the idea of this bit. If you're wondering why it looks so strange. So maybe these are finished now. Not quite. Very close though. Any second now. We should get this to work. There we go. So we got eight nether sludges. Those are another sludges. All we need to do with those is to put those into a furnace. Think like this will do. Have some bread running. Oh, it's not working today. Oh, that's better. Go. And they all make um, nether bricks. And actually, goes quite fast. So let's have a look at that. Let's put this into here. So I've got 56. I was out, and had a very actually a very exciting time going to find something. There we go. So we have now some eight nether bricks, which is actually a good use of that stuff, even though there's plenty of nether bricks around here. But if you weren't in the nether, maybe near a fortress, you'd probably it'd be quite sensible to do that, wouldn't it? Now this thing has been running like crazy, and I've got some more items, and I want to show you another trick. The fastest way I know of making compressed cobblestone. Let's have a look at this. So I need basically one row's worth of space. Not sure that'll do for that. Ah. I do need one row of space. Let's just split those into two. And let's go along here and then get out of this room. Out of a row of cobblestone. Because that's nine. A row is nine, it just happens to fit perfectly. Now let's come on across here. And beside here I put a crafting table. All you have to do is shift right click, uh, shift left click these onto there, and you get 64 compressed cobblestones, which is great. And now all I need to do now is to put them down. Well, um, the fastest way to put them down is with a hammer. So let's just take the hammer out, and uh, not the hammer, the wand. So all I need to do is put down, put down four, come back a bit, and then just use the hammer, so like this. And I just do about. I, Gives me about 32, I think. So that'll do. So I've got exactly 32 left. So this is 32. Right, do that click. Try again. One more, I think. And that's it again. I should be able to pick up all that gravel. Why can't I pick up the gravel? Oh, that's better. I thought I could. So we've got exactly s nine stacks of gravel. So all I then do is come along here. Ouch. <laughs> How many times does that happen? Very often, actually. This button here, let's dig these into here like this. Um, and then I put the rest into a chest here like this. Control shift clicking on there and it puts everything into that chest. So then I set up a servo so that servo is pushing the items into here. 
it's just a straightforward servo, it doesn't matter what items they are, nothing's blacklisted. They come into here, it fills it up, and very slowly it'll come out and it'll start to sift those stuff. And that'll come out and come into here. It's just as simple as that, real simple automation. But quite effective because we don't need to worry about it. And the power is all coming from the windmill here. It's not enough power to actually keep that running 100% of the time, but it, it works okay. So that's that one done. The other thing I did is put on the top here some golden spikes. So look at those. Because I noticed when I was here, I got these golden spikes here and I've got an XP experience pylon which will collect the XP. So it's got 600 XP in there at the moment, which is great. So when I need some XP, I'm just going to get it from there, can't I? Now, another tip that <laughs> my link was giving me is it gave me lots of tips. So this is another one that's good. I'd actually forgotten about this. I didn't really know about it. It says if you hoe grass, there's a chance of getting, a small chance, of getting worms. So let's hoe some grass. I think I can use any form of hoe. But the chances are quite low. There we go, some worms. I got two worms. And they will do a an area of three by three. And they will, um, so let's put one down, say, here. And that'll then hydrate and also keep these, um, what's the word, cultivated. So I can carry on doing that. Let's do another three. So then we have some pretty good farmland here, like that. And we can get another three here. It just happens I've got three by three by three. No, I didn't get any that time. And as you can see, those have gone dark. and They keep going light and dark as the worms go past. So that's another tip for you. And of course that means then you can plant anything you like in there. So, shall I try another one? Yes, I've got some more worms. Look, two more. Let's put those worms down there. And one in here. And that should keep this whole area reasonably fertile. Which is great. Thank you very much for all your tips, by the way. Everybody's giving me tips. I'm really, really delighted with them. They're great. Even if I know the stuff, it's still worth like, giving me the tips because I don't always know everything. By a long short, a long short, a long short, long way. So now, what I've been doing is we want to set up some traps. Don't we? we want to set up a a mob farm of some description. So what I want to do is I went over here and I set it. I set some stuff up oh, oh, there's a blaze. Now what I've done here is I've created a new. Manilium, um, that was actually a blight blaze. Now the blights are the purple ones. I think it was a blight. Let me just check it. They're the purple ones and they're nasty. Because they're, they're nasty for several reasons. Obviously they increase the difficulty by quite, by seven. Well, I'm not sure what the number means. There's several factors that increase difficulty. Time, distance from the spawn point, and also... Um, how many mobs you kill and the and the blight ones which are the purple ones you go up very fast so you've got to be careful you don't really want to grind those too much but i believe what happens tells me that you if you put spikes down they don't actually um uh, counter difficulty so let's see so what i've done here is i've got some dirt and what i need to make here is a some way of blowing the mobs out of here so let's go and do that I'm not sure I want to do that this episode because it can take quite a long time to set up a mob farm. There's a mob right in front of me. There we go. And what I'm doing with this with this uh, shuriken oh I know what I wanted to do. An important step is I'm increasing its experience level. So if you look at it here you'll see now it's 331. It's got one modifier I think. Yes. If I can get this up to five modifiers, then we can make it unbreakable. And that's the idea of that one. So I'm just using that as a primary weapon. Now, Psycho, Night my Psycho Nightmare Mangle told me to make a sword. So let's go and make a sword. And I've decided what I want to make. And it should be 
on this table on the tool forge and I want to make a katan a katana so let's set up the recipe for katana and make one of these things if you look at this it's actually got a 2.55 attack speed and an 8.48 attack damage so it's a pretty decent weapon even before you use it for anything else you think look at this one there this has got 12 attack damage that's better but the attack speed of this one is 0.8 so it's slow whereas this one's very fast let's just have a look I don't know if I've got anything to attack could go and attack a zombie pigment I suppose I think you can kill I think you can do fairly fairly fast let's go and see if we can find anything to attack I noticed there were some Dombey Pigmen running around here. Is there any on my map? There's one, something down here. Oh, There's a blaze. I probably won't attack the blaze. Oh, the skeleton over there. And the Wither Skeleton. Now the Wither Skeleton, oh I got him too. The Wither Skeleton I will do from the top here because they're nasty. I see this. <laughs> right, let's get them. I'm being quiet because I'm holding down the button. Ah, oh, some more. If you hold this down hard, like they, they actually can't get through. They can't get past you. Right, I think I run out of ammo now. Right, got them. So if they actually dropped anything useful, I see some bones and some XP, and I've got to pick up my bits of ammunition. Possibly, if I've got it in my hand, does it pick it up? Or oh, see, it's gone back from being unused. So, didn't test out the sword, but what did we get? We got lots of bones. We've got different types of bones. Okay. And I can hear a magma now. That would be a good a good thing to attack. Where is it? Okay. I think something's coming like that probably is a an ember I can see that moves fairly fast. The embers move fairly fast. How's my health doing? Let's just eat. Yeah, I actually got some yellow hearts as well, so. No, I don't see anything around here. Oh yeah, there's a little one. Let's go and see how effective this thing is against that. Now, I've got a way down here. This is a big one. It'll be quite nasty, so let's see. Hello. Oh yeah. I'm just spam clicking it, see if we can spam click it. Push it back a bit. Oh, they have a lot of healthies as well. There we got it. Now we go. Oh, oh, better get out of the way. <laughs> I really don't want to get this busy one, but I've got no choice, have I? If it attacks me, I'm dead. <laughs> Right, let's go back to the sword. Which I'd probably be best if I actually left this thing alone, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's leave it alone. If you can't, see, if it follows me up here, it'll be all right because it'll get ground on the spikes. Ooh. And actually, what I have done is I've set up some things up down here. There we go. Oh, he got out. Oh, sneaky. Can't have you getting out of there.
Ah, that's better. Oops, out again. Let's see if I can push it back into the into the spikes. <laughs> well, having fun with the mob. All right, it's for certain. How's my health doing? Well, it's not too bad at the moment. Cool. If I can keep him down in the spikes, it'll be alright with it. Oh, oops, there we go, magic all on. Oh, and I died. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> oh well, that's the danger of fighting mobs. So I shall have to wait and respawn. Hopefully those things are going to get my grave. Hopefully my grave's not too far away, which of course it isn't. What about that? You get a blight and then you get a one with a thing. That's really bad, isn't it? So let's so, so, so out. Of course, I lost all my XP. What have I got here? Some bits and pieces of which have been dropped. Let's have a look. E. Oh, I got a molten core. That's pretty good. Some magna creams. That's pretty good. So let's just get rid of some space. Uh, I need my bag. Let's put my bag down here. Chip this on the floor for the time being. Pick up the bag. So I've got different types of bones, that's interesting. Nothing's down there. Okay. So that was um probably an expensive XP expedition. Ouch. <laughs> so anyway, I can start eating while I'm here, can't I? Let's just do that. Oh, of course, yes, I died, so the food's not in there. I don't quite know what it's doing on it, so I think it must be one of the skills I've picked up. Right. So, next thing. This. I hope I've covered everything in terms of... Uh, let's put this away over here. What I've got to do is move everything out of here into that. Just hold the mouse button across and just shift it across as if there's anything in there that I don't need. And then do the magna... I think the magna creams go in there. They do, don't they? Coal dust. I get coal dust every once in a while. It's actually a different type of coal dust. Ah, I'm not keeping it in there anyway. I think it's coming into here. Yes, I've got three of those now. And nether bricks, I've got some more. Let's put those into there. I've got quite a few nether bricks. So, now, let's have a look at this thing that I've got here. Gold spike. Have I picked up a... Oh, no, I think I had a gold spike with me already, didn't I? So, a bucket. I don't know if I got a bucket around. Possibly in here. I used a lot of buckets. And the reason I used a lot of buckets is because I discovered something else. If I could see if I can find what I discovered. Here we go, yes. Energized netherrack. This is something I've never seen before, so it's a new thing to me. Um, let's look at the uses of that. Basically, if I smelt it, I'll get one bucket of energized glowstone, which is actually pretty good. So I think I've got a spare tank around. I think I've got a spare tank in here. I've got two. I might need one. I'm not sure yet. Let's just put the tank down here like that. And then I've got these buckets of energized glowstone. There's one in here, I noticed. And I think I've got another one in here. That would just basically pick them up when I was mining the energized thing. And you can see that goes, because <laughs> it's energized, it's going up like that. Good. Wow. Hopefully they didn't do too much damage when they were doing this stuff. Now here's another tip for you. Here I've got, basically this thing gets full really fast with creosote oil. And here I've got some uh, planks ready to be processed. So all I need to do is take the buckets like this, 
put those into there and then shift click it into there and then I can shift click these out of there move the bucket back again and go again so this is actually fairly fat if I pressed R it would have been better wouldn't it oh I didn't take this one out of there that's the trouble try again <laughs> I can't take it out I've got to go into this and then remove it from here like that then I can take it out so we can then shift click this into there take the take the wood and take the bucket then you can do it twice more and repeat this process until you've got rid of all of the and I've just done it again so you've got rid of all of the um, creosote and you're actually making planks at the same time let's take one out of here if I can yep I can so shift click it in is great but so if I get to shift click it out again it becomes a bit of a nuisance and we've got two left, perfect. And try again. Ah, my shift clicking is bad today. So I've got 64, and that's just about that tank's got one bucket's worth in it or thereabouts. And I could put this into there, and I can take my three buckets with me. And I want these buckets because I want to make some. I hope I can do this. It might be I have to be in the right biome. And it might not be. There is a biome, which isn't too far away, that gives you. Let's have a look. This hot spring water. We can actually go and have a look at this biome. Before we do that, of course, I've got to just sharpen my tools. That's okay, I can do that. Sharpen that one up. And this one, what does it need for requirements? It'll be manilium again, I guess. So I'm going to leave that like that. Like that and like that, and then we should be okay, I think. I can put the redstone and the gunpowder away. What else can I put away in here that's not necessary at the moment? I think that's about it. I do want to do something with these. Let's do these first. Very noisy. Don't ask me what's going on there. So, what I want to do with these is to make a compressed hammer. I have no idea where that's coming from. All right, got nine, good. So you can then shift click these into here like this. Let's see, it wasn't so sensible. And you get this compressed diamond hammer. And that's a quest and they have to make it. So that's a crafting task. So let's uh, have a look at that one first as well before we actually do anything else. Because they're great, these compressed diamond hammers. I, I think I might even have enough to make the next level up. How many have I got in here? Let's move those two down. Sort that again. I think that's nine. And there's another one of these which you can basically also make. I've seen it on the quest book. So all I'm doing is scrolling across. Oh no, it doesn't work. Okay. It might be a different recipe actually. Let's have a look at the uses of this. Ha! <laughs> okay, it's not so expensive. And that should give me another recipe. That should give me another quest. The ultimate compressed hammer. And the reason I was just really for quest purposes, I didn't really want to do it for the else at the moment. But I suspect that's even better. Compa combine with blasting for better results. Okay, not sure how that works. We'll have to look it up. So now. I've got my this and I've got this that should be sufficient let's see if this works what I'm thinking is it might not work because I'm in a in a normal biome so let's just dig a little hole here like that and put into that a bucket of lava I need to shift right close into that and let's see if this actually works the hot springs of water let's put it on here ah okay Right, that means we've got to go and do that in a place that uh, has hot, has lava. So let's go and do that. Put that, set that to mode, to the hot spring stuff. What time is it? 29 minutes. Okay, I've got a little bit of time left. And what did I do? I found I came out, actually I came out here, I think I came out somewhere here, here. 
I had to go behind a tree to get it to come out again. I don't know where it came out. Actually, I went through the um, when I was doing this. Let's do it. I went through the fortress, and that's how I actually got the. Um, I encountered by accident some wither skeletons, and I managed to get one for the drop of evil. So now, if I remember rightly, it's up here. I took a route that was away from the. Uh, how did I get there? I've normally lit these things up with talk with Darius. Look, I normally light the way up with torches. In fact, I haven't done this time. There we go. I think this is the route I took. Ooh. How did I get there? Oops, I don't want to keep away from that thing for certain. And that one, look at that. They're all over the place, these blights. Now, whoa! What threw that at me? That must have been the magic mob, huh? Do you know, I've completely forgotten how I got the grinder. Oh, we're back to base. <laughs> hmm. Tell you what, it's this direction because I can see it on the map. I've, I've got a marker on the mini map, oh, on the map, so that should be okay. What have I got that as an exit? Well, I came down here. Uh oh. <laughs> I think it's time to go back home. <laughs> I've got blindness from it. Oh, did he go? No, where is he? Something's firing at me. That's interesting. I've forgotten which way I went. I do remember, ah, oh, here we go, look. Because I made myself a bridge when I came along here. Now, where's the exit point? It's probably straight ahead. Oops, there are far too many mobs around at the moment and I don't like it at all. Does that take me back? Yes, it does, doesn't it? Oh, that's the way I came, yes. Ah. Oh. And I really don't want to kill this one. Got it. Oh, I got a heart. Maybe I don't mind killing it then. Let's get this eating. Let's eat this heart first of all. Let's eat some food. There's something else up there as well. Now, where did I go after this? Yeah, that was a zombie pigman. And they go really fast. But I don't want to attack zombie pigmans anyway. Um, do you know, I'm going the wrong way. I need to go this way. That's a dead bush. That's right, I went over some soul sand. did I get there? Tell you what. I must have come this way. I'm sorry about this. I've actually lost my direction so how I got there. Because it only went once and it's actually not the easiest of places to find it. But I'm looking for my torches. Some diamond ore, let's go and get that while I'm here. Where's it gone to? So 
reinforced. There's basically it's this direction here, so I've got to keep going in this direction. And hopefully, I'll find everything seems to lead back to itself anyway. So. Polar, 213 blocks in this direction, and I can hear a blaze of some description. Can't see him yet. Probably a ju blazing juggernaut. Right, if it's in this direction, we're going to we're going to use the pickaxe trick. So, get this one done, and let's just oops, not throw the pickaxe away. Let's try and shift clicking it, see if we can get her through here. Now some lava here. Let's just pick up this lava. Did I just make a big hole down? Oh, I did, didn't I? <laughs> Oops. Right, I wonder if I can reach this lava with my chalice. Yes, I can. Good. Let me just wait for this to disappear. We can then make a, a path back through here. I should really use... I shouldn't be using my pickaxe for this stuff. So it's still over there. It's 170... 120, 178, 187 blocks. Well, how am I going to get across it? I didn't go this way across, I went up. I don't really want to go this way across either. Let's get rid of that block there. Let's get this one doing it again. Yeah, I'm sure I went through the fortress when I was doing this before, so... Oops, let's get my sword out. Give it some XP. Good. I really want to show you this area, but I really do need to find the way back to it, don't I? And it is quite dangerous going down these places. Let's just see if I can get down here. Enderman over there, that's not such a threat. Right, I, can certainly, I can certainly dig my way down through here, let's do that. Some of those bushes which I don't want, and some iron. Keep away from this. So it's 124 blocks from here. And here you can see it now, we're actually approaching the, that area. Oh, and you've got to watch out for these as well. These are actually quite nasty. Can we get some nasty mob here? Right, we've reached that. <laughs> I think there was one just there. Is that a mob? Oh, scabry bush. We can take that, can we? Do we need to take that scabry bush? Okay, just like itself. And here we have the water. So what we can do with this water now is to put down on top of it some lava let's try that and that should make obsidian I'm hoping it'll make obsidian it doesn't have to pick it up again doesn't seem to be doing anything does it let's get my bucket out do I have to do it the other way around that's interesting, that should be disappearing now. Or is it maybe it's made something else? What's it made? Okay, we'll do it the other way around. <laughs> Come on, you lot, disappear. Let's put some leather right down here. I only thought I only put one block of lava down. Oh, it's made of stone. Okay, fine. So we can mine up the stone fairly quickly. Let's do that. Set this to none. Right, like that. 
So what I want to do is to get leather. Oops, I don't think I should be in that water. <laughs> it made me go funny. Right, let's do it the other way around. Then. Let's take some buckets of water from here. Got a bucket in it, good. Now let's put some, let's put a hole in here like that. Now let's put the lava into this. How much have I got in here? Oh, not very much anymore. I must have put more, more down than I expected. There we go. So let's put the bucket now on top of this. Oh. Oh. That I didn't expect. Do I have to do that in here? Because somebody says you can pipe it. Lava into the... Or that way. I read it in one of the things. So I've got to see if that works now. Um... Right, got another bucket of this stuff. Ah, well, maybe that's been disabled. I don't know. Just try that again. Put it on top of it. Let's put it down here. No, I can't put it down at all, can I? Oh, okay, that's a shame. I was hoping to find a good way of getting lava. So I can't put it here, and this is ice, and this is the biome that we need to be in. Let's change it, just pick it up. See if we can actually put it down. See, I've got another bucket of lava there. Prepared, ready. <laughs> Does it always disintegrate? It does, doesn't it? So how do I get this to go into that? Let's try breaking this across here. That made stone. I think the water has to be nearer. Yeah, I'm just making stone, aren't I? Okay. And I'll show you the way I came. It was much more interesting than this way I just done now. If I can, that is. Well, where's my route? I should have some torches. There, look. Let's go over there. We'll go back home. This is far too exciting. I just quite find it's quite stressful, actually. <laughs> yes, I covered it. I blocked it off. For a good reason, because those mobs that are actually here are actually rather nasty. So let's say, I've got lots of bits and pieces picked up. Let's get rid of some of the scarberry bushes. I want the netherrack down here. So that hasn't worked. But there might be a trick for that, and I'm not 100% sure what it is. Right, so I always put the torches when I'm going somewhere on the right hand side. So when I come back again, I go on the left hand side. And then I built a bridge up here so we could look down below. And you're so, that's a blazing juggernaut. Good, right, and test it down. So I press shift, you can't see me, so I believe. But he's coming, so I'll just, we'll just have a keep out of his base. He should disappear actually. Gets on in, there he's gone now. See, he's lost interest. So we can carry on. He's trying to follow me, so let's just carry on with that one. There we go. I don't know why I couldn't find this entrance when I came out before, but I know I haven't lit haven't got it working very well in terms of the entrance. So we go over the blood bits. And these are these things here are actually quite. There's some mob here. It's like an it's like a, a creeper that explodes, and then releases these spores, and the spores make mobs. There it was. It made a little sort of grunty type noise. Yes, my route's a bit strange. <laughs> it wasn't direct. So I'm just having a think now how I can actually do this so we can actually find this way back again. I'm sure there's a trip with this water but I don't know what it is. You see now we come out here and this is, oops there he is, look. Exit. What I did was just to come down through here so that is a great tip. Thank you very much for that one. It's Because those things are a real pain. 
see that wood there that wood there is where my exit is let's go run for it a bit quicker and shift Where's he gone to? It's gone. Now, where's my entrance? Here. Nope. <laughs> it's just near here, so look. Oh, there it is. Oh, I've got to be careful to hit any zombie pigment. I did that once by accident and got to. Uh, didn't get any any ordinary zombie pig when I got a nasty one. Oh, got him. Might as well catch, catch the stuff he dropped. Oh, I don't think I've got everything. It's just the blaze rod. Let us pick up that stuff. Right, good. And I can hear that one as well. So this is the way back. And we should come out just beside base. I think it's just down here. Uh, no, it can't be here. That was the old way, I think. Oh, look, there it is. What happened to that? So that must be up here. And sure enough, this is where we come out. And I couldn't find that earlier on. Okay, I know why. So there you are, <laughs> me and my grouchy nose. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I was a bit long in the middle. I might cut a bit out of it. Maybe not. You let me know what you think to this type of excursions. I'm curious. Next time, I'm planning to get on and do some uh, work for the mob farm. So until then, bye for now.